Hello everyone. Welcome to West Ham Reunited. Um, it's been about a week since we did the last show, so this show is going to be about the preview of the West Ham Rapid Vienna game. But before we get started with everything and obviously talk about the guests that we have here, um, we want to say, sort of mention Glazewise, our, our sponsors. So if, for double glazing, if you need any doors or conservatories or windows, then Glazewise are the choice. So, Andy, who, who do we need for windows and doors? Glazewise. Glazewise. <laughs> Mar Marshy, who do we need? If you need any doors or windows? Glazewise, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we started this last time and, and it worked a treat. It worked a treat with all the guests. Yeah. Um, well, well, you got, uh, right. yeah, Most important yeah. thing, quote West Ham Reunited and you get discount. You get If you do an order with John, you get discount as well. That's even better. Definitely, definitely. And um, we also want to do sort of a shout out to sort of food banks as well, iron supporting food banks. Um, so they've been doing a lot of good work um, around in and out around the stadium and you can see them near the aquatic centre, um, especially after tomorrow's game and every game. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you can kind of bring some food or donation or anything like that. I and mean, you, you can check them on Twitter as well. Um, so that if there's anything, for example, that you perhaps not sure what to bring, like sometimes they have too much tin food, as an example. I think they're looking for snacks. I'm probably going to take some chocolates up there. Um, so, yeah, help them. They've been working all over lockdown and the, and the need is still there and they do a great job. Some of the players have been helping out as well. Um, you've seen sort of Declan Rice and others helping financially out their own pockets. So, so, so kind of please do that, really. Um, so now, so we've got Kafal with us, and we have a special guest, Marshy. So Marshy's first time on West Ham Reunited. He's one of the top sort of people that talk about the game on West Ham Fans TV. Been around sort of on our screens for a number of years, really. So Marshy, really, really proud and really happy that you're you kind of on our channel. So, so how have you been lately? Been all right? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, evening, boys. I'm uh, I'm pleased to be here, to be honest. It's a, uh, as I say, I appreciate you asking, and... Uh... Happy to help any form of channels that I wouldn't see. You know, I, I, I realise and recognise the, the work that you all put in and the time that you spend with it, as well as your own time and family time and, you know, working commitments. So it's um, it's good to be a part of it. And obviously, you know, you're a channel that's getting off the floor, the ground running. I've seen some of your stuff, uh, which is good. So, um, yeah, pleased to be. I'm doing well. Yeah. How are you, boys? Yeah, not too bad. Like you said, we must be mad to start a channel. But here we go. We've started the journey. <laughs> Yeah, some good. good people like Kafal and West Ham and Alfie who couldn't join us today, but he's, he's, a, he's an important part of the program as well. And yeah, next couple of days and weeks, you'll be seeing new exciting guests, some well-known faces, some that have been on other channels, not been around a while. So I've been, I've been a bit of a Sherlock Holmes going around looking for good people like yourself, Marshy, and really happy that you're on board. And hopefully we'll see one more come on later on today, he's running a bit late. So hopefully there'll be, there'll be another person really. Um, so we'll be discussing the game tomorrow, Thursday evening. Um, I think uh, Miles is going to be going on his holiday soon, which he's been looking forward to for so long as part of his birthday celebration. So he uh, um, won't be there, in, will you? In 12 hours' time, I'll already be in the air, mate. So I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been looking forward to this and, and he's been working very hard. So fully deserved holiday for him, I think. What's, what, what, what's he doing booking, what's he doing booking <laughs> breaks and holidays in, in season time? <laughs> it's for my um, 30th, Marsha. You're only 30 yeah, not I, once I on Sunday. Say, <laughs> 30, so, yeah. Yeah, I think there's been... Um, I, it's probably been hard to plan, Miles. There's loads of them going. So obviously we've got to fix a date when every, everyone can go, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I was, a, I was originally out there. For, I'm going to Ibiza. So I was originally out there for the Clockwork Orange Festival, but they cancelled it literally like a month ago because they couldn't get the restrictions and get lifted. So, which is a bit frustrating, but we're still going there for a piss up. <laughs> <laughs> right gentlemen let's get on with the preview of the west ham united rapid vienna game so looking at the table um obviously we're first um gank second with three points as well following their one nil win at rapid vienna which was a last minute winner for them uh, rapid vienna are third themselves with no points and obviously dynamo zagreb I've got to really go for finishing top, really. That'll get you into the last 16 knockout stage. Uh, finish second, you go to one more game to play, the last 32. And if you finish third, then you go into the conference league, really, which 
I don't think we want. We don't want to mix with Spurs, do we, lads? So leave them to it. We don't want to do that. Um, so that's kind of how the form is. And I think I think my view is that last game we won at Dynamo, I think that was the hardest fixture in this group away. And the way yeah. we put them away was very impressive. No clean sheet, 2-0, looked fairly comfortable, limited them to not many shots. I'm not hoping, hoping a bit more of that tomorrow, and especially being at home, perhaps a, a few more goals, really. Um, when you look at Rapper Vienna, we have never played them competitively in, in, in any format. The only thing I found, uh, Miles is going to laugh, was a 1955 game to celebrate putting in floodlights at Upton Park. So we, we played Tottenham during that time, and apparently Rapper Vienna in 1955, around that time, were doing a tour of UK as part of Europe, and that finished 1-1. So that, that's about it. A few more people of my age will remember them losing in the European Cup Winners' Cup to Everton in 1984. That's about the last sort of big final they, they've been in, really. And it's a small league in Austria. I, I was there on a trip last week. Lovely country, green zone, fairly easy to get to. A couple of hours flight. Everyone speaks English. Um, the ground itself is about half an hour away from the city centre. Austria Vienna is more central. Rapid Vienna is about half an hour away. And also, Marsh, even even though my hotel was central, the hotel is it's about 40 euros, my man, getting getting to the center from the airport. So so make sure you've got a couple of friends to share that cab if you're going to get there. That's my tip to everyone. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> it's about 40, 50 pounds to get into the center. And then, um, obviously, if you're not in a rush, I advise you guys to get familiar with the metro, which I didn't use. So perhaps that that will be the best route for yourselves. But the beer out there is lovely. I'm not really a big beer fan, but I can tell you, obviously, you know, once you get to the Germany, Austria zone, lovely, lovely beer. The water is spring mineral water, everyone. The, the water that comes out of the taps in Vienna is actually spring water from the Alps. It's amazing. And they don't pay for their water. All the, you know, loads of things I found out there, really. Um, Evening, in terms mate. of Hello, mate. How are you doing? Let me just get this out of the way. Hang on. Yeah, so it's it's mad though, isn't it? Like to think that we're it's the first, I'm gutted, I'm missing it. Honestly, I am gutted. I'm not actually going tomorrow. But um, we'll start with you, Carl. We ain't, I ain't heard you yet. Um, what kind of game are you expecting tomorrow? Do you reckon it's going to be an open game? Um, no, I think I think we should be well good enough to just go out there and beat them well. Uh, I think we have a lot of quality, as we've seen in the. The cup game against Man United, uh, we have a, a good squad. I know it could it could be just a one time thing, but I think again in the likes of these games, it's it's worth it to give the some of the some of the squad players a go, and uh, even the odd young lads off the bench if if it's going well. And uh, I think we should we should be uh, well up for it and uh, should be able to get the results. Marshy. Yeah, I'll second that to be honest. I think um like Jazz said, I think after the uh after the first game, you know, sort of opening against uh, Dynamo and that we seem to have never been away if you like. It seems like we've been around Europe for a long time and um they may not be the best side obviously that we're potentially gonna come up against on the way. But um as I said before, boys, you've got to beat what's in front of you. And I think even when we rest a few, because of obviously, you know, the um you got the transition in the team, obviously the amount of games that we're playing and stuff. So you would imagine, like Cal said, I think we the side that we will put out, um, which I think will be interesting as well. So I still think there'll be a couple of the boys from the weekend in there. Um, obviously that um, that went ninety five minutes, and obviously we looked a bit jaded and tired. So um, yeah, I, I, I generally believe whoever we put out there is strong enough to do a job, and you know, without disrespecting um, Rapid, I think um, we'll have more than enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you look at the form, um, last year they, they finished kind of second to get into this competition and they've been off to a very, very bad start this season for one reason or another. So they're second from bottom at the moment. Um, so their form is, isn't isn't really looking too clever. I mean, we lie seventh place, as you know, a couple of points from being second. Um, in terms of form, West Ham played 10, won seven, drawn two, lost one. Rapid Vienna played 10, won four, drawn one, lost five. And in their last five, they've lost four and won one. So then they're not looking too clever and um, they are a bit nervous. And obviously with a lot of European teams, they do like to sit back and frustrate you. But having, but them having lost at home to Genk, they need to get a draw tomorrow, I think, to try to finish third if they can. That might help us 
Um, you never know, but they really should have put that team away and got a draw and didn't get anything. So, so hopefully that will help us create a bit of space at the back. Um, in terms of odds, with the bookies, Rapid Vienna are 11 to 1, 6 to 1 for the draw, and we're about sort of 1.2 for the home win, really. So, very, very strong home win, really, for that. Um, in, in terms of the team, um, I mean, if you look at the Dynamo team that we our lineup was 4 2 3 1, and I'm looking at the same, perhaps the same lineup tomorrow. Um, Starting with you, um, Kafal, what, what do you think in terms of any changes you think in our lineup? And do you think the formation might change from the Dino one? And, and which players do you think might might come in or change from the last game? Um, I think I don't think the formation is going to change. I think Moyes is going to stick with it. I think he has the two teams, two squads that are able to play in the same the same style and in the same formation. I think, as a few of the lads have said in the comments there, I think Mike said it and uh, Richard just put it in. We're going to have hopefully the chance to see Ben Johnson at right back, which is a rare enough occurrence. He doesn't get a play in his position a lot, and uh, I think Sufa might get the the rest, and uh, Johnson might get the chance to start there. It's 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 the game that you'll get the likes of Vlasic in, and Vlasic really needs to hit the ground running. And uh, in in a game like this, where he can where he can get a goal, get some confidence, and uh, really get into the team and show his worth. Uh, even even Yarmo. Give, give him a go. I thought he played well for what we expected of him against Man United. So, um, yeah, it's 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 going to be one of those. We'll have the mixture of the, the fringe players and we'll have a few solid starters, but uh, it should it sh- should be a good game, I think. Any any particular players you think that will come in, you think? Or... I think it's it, it'll be Diop and Dawson in the back. I think... Uh, I'm 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 not sure if he's going to play Ariola or if he's going to play Fab yet because he he played Fab in the last one but uh it's one of those we don't know what what he's going to choose till we see it. I think he should give Ariola the uh, Ariola the chance in it. Um left back's a confusing one. I don't know like maybe this could be Longello's chance to get in because I don't know if he's going to play uh Cress there if he's going to risk starting him and uh we can kind of see that Masuaku is really not a left back at this stage and he flourishes on the attack. And uh, you could Kral Kral should get a good run out, and uh, maybe even Nobs Lanzini, them sort of lads. It's 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 going to be a good one to see all of them out. What about you, Marshu? What team are you expecting tomorrow, mate? Yeah, I think it'll be similar to the to the first game, Jazz. I don't think there'll be too many sort of um, you know, obviously only forced um, changes. Um, I think you'll see, like Kel said, I think you'll see the fringe players that may not necessarily get a go in the league. Um, you know, the noble Lanzini, you know, we actually set up very well and played well at Old Trafford in the Cup. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I would back, obviously, seeing that sort of side, you know, going forward tomorrow night. I think, you know, you you maybe get a mix of the sort of a couple of the first team players, you know, maybe, as uh, you know, we've discussed Ben Johnson. Um, for me as well, I think he's he's a very good player. Yeah. I think very, looks at, again, looks very established at, what, 18 or 19? Um, a very young age, like Cal said, not being played it is, you know, prefer position at right back. So that might be an opportunity for us to see that. I agree with Dawson and Diop. Um, I think Fabianski will play. I think obviously being his last season, I think Moyes will want to try and get, you know, him as many games as what he can. But, you know, take nothing away from Mariola. He's coming and play well at Old Trafford in the Cup. So um, he'll be he'll be ready to, to go if needed. Um Obviously, you know my views on Yarmolenko. I'm still waiting to take him back to the Ukraine. <laughs> well, well, he's good at getting in a helicopter and watching the boxing, isn't he? And taking a few photos. He's good at that. Well, that's right. Yeah, they they got yeah. back from Leeds pretty well, didn't they? Him and Ryan. I did see that. <laughs> he, he, he was ready at half time, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, even on the train, he was still on the way back. It took a while, but um, yeah, I, I, the guy said there. Yeah, you know, I'd be giving Sue check and the likes of Rice a rest. I think we've got enough in there. Crow Noble. Lanzini, you might be see a four nails, you know, towards the end. You would like to hope that we don't necessarily need um, a lot of the first team players. You know, it might be an opportunity to give them another rest in uh, in light of the Brentford game on Sunday. So, um, yeah, I think whatever happens, I think maybe a weaker, for want of a better word, side will be enough to to see us through anyway. What about me, Marzi? What do you what do you think? I think Ariola will play tomorrow. I think I think he's got to. I think I think uh, I think he needs to. I think it'll be nice for him to play in front of the home crowd as well. Get a good reception. Get a feel of feel of the atmosphere. I know he played it again, well for Fulham last year, and he and that was without a crowd in there. And he said how much he loves it. 
Um, for me, I would play the wing backs. I'd play a three. I, I would give the likes of Longello or Baptiste a chance if that was me personally as a back three with Diop and Dawson. Then you can put Masawaku as a, a wing back, and I just think he's amazing at that. I'm, I know he can't defend to save his life, but um, g- going forward, he's amazing. I'd probably have Crow, Crow, Lanzini, and Noble probably as a three. Like really pack the pack the midfield out. Um, on the right, that's a tough one for me. I'd probably say Bowen. I think Bowen will probably start. Even he, he, like, like Moy said, he's got a fitness, and I would start Antonio tomorrow. And then if the game's comfortable, bring him off after. Yeah, what I would do is I would bring Ariola in, uh, bring yep. Dawson in for Zuma, bring Kral in for Suchek, and believe it or not, I would start with Rice and Antonio as well, and bring Johnson in. Um, and I would leave Bowen on the bench. I think after starting the last three. But, uh, yeah, we can still mix it. I don't really have a good knowledge on the under-23s or the younger players, I'm afraid. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I thought in the League Cup, at least, someone would have been on the bench for that game. But there was no sign of anyone. So, don't, I don't know if any of you lads follow the, the youngsters or, or see if any of them you think are worthy of a place on the bench? Or uh, I, I know there's a few. Obviously, you've got Baptiste. You've got Longello, who's got a wand of a left foot. He's scored... Few free kicks this season for the under twenty threes. You've got Equa, who we've got, obviously mm. o- Oko Flex. Um, we have got some talent, but uh, Ashby at right back as well. He's he's yeah, been okay. playing very well when he gets the time. Yeah, I'll yeah. Ashby, I went yeah. Up... yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ashby, amazing. yeah, Ashby. When I went to watch the under twenty threes at South End, he was my man in the match. He was outstanding. I know we've only seen him a couple of times feature for the under under. Um, uh, in the first team, sorry, but he's he's got pace, he's got strong, and he's a proper proper fullback. So yeah, it would be nice. I don't know if any of you guys read that the um, there was a defender that Pellegrini released, and he ended up on the Man City bench yesterday, or when they played PSG. A young oh, really? fullback, yeah, young fullback that they took too long signing him, and he he left. And <laughs> yeah, he's only eighteen, nineteen. I think he's a right back. I think. Um, so, yeah, more stories coming from the great Pellegrini era, really. But, um, OK, yeah, it looks like we're going to play the same team. Yeah, we, we can bring in a lot more players than we could last season. Um, in terms of um, sort of the opposition, Rapid Vienna, they they played 4-4-2 in their last um, um, Europa game. And I think they'll need to play that way because I think they're going to they need to get a draw. They can't just sit back and wait to lose, surely. Um, they do change it a lot at the back. Um, they are known to play four four two, like I said. They played three five, sort of two last year, and then changed it for some reason. It hasn't worked for them. And then in their league game, they played four two three one. Um, so in terms of tactics, I've heard that they they do a mixture of a man marking at the Gank game. I think um, a little bit of a lack of a pace in the defenders. Um, you got a player called Petrovic in midfield, who's a bit of a playmaker. Um, up front, interestingly, um, you got two strikers. You got um, Fontas, who's a Greek striker, five foot five, so quite small, um, but quite hard to tackle because of his size. <laughs> and he was the third highest <laughs> goal scorer last year, and he plays alongside um, Kara, who's, who's I think he's Austrian. He's kind of quite a physical striker, and he might give a bit of trouble to the centre-backs, really. But there isn't anyone that would be famous that we would know. I don't think any of them are featured in any of the big tournaments or anything like that. Um, so in terms of how the game goes, what, what kind of setup do you think Rapa Vienna? Do you think they'll come and sit back or do you think they need to get a, a point, especially because they lost their first game against Genk? Um, um, starting with you, Marshy. I think, to be fair, I think they'll want to be careful, Jazz Lowe. You know, I think knowing that, you know, although it might, it's not going to be the strongest 11 possible, as we know, it will be a, a chance for others. But I think if they commit too many men forward, I think it's going to be a case of, you know, if they get caught on the counter, we're still going to be dangerous about the best players that we've got in the side. Um, we're still going to cr- create that amount of opportunity. Um, and it's, you know, I, I think they probably see it as maybe they've got nothing to lose. They've got to come at us. Um and if they do that, then I, I imagine that we'll expose them maybe further than what we would anyway. Um, 
just playing our general sort of game and, and sticking to our you know our, our jobs individually and sort of jobs as a unit going forward and and defending. So um, yeah, I, I'd be interested to see because I think they may be a bit reserved and sit back, but then you know maybe if they sense a an opportunity, depending on how we start as well and get out of the blocks. And if we don't, obviously that might give them a chance. But um, yeah, I think they'll mostly want to be a bit cautious as to you know us going forward and you know exposing them a little bit. Yeah, it could be. Do you reckon they're going to put these little flags on our seats? I'm just, I'm just guessing that something's going to happen because it's European yeah, game. It's going to create a bit of that. I'm, I, I say, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see that. I think um, maybe been a long time coming for us. Obviously, I've never seen it, especially away from I'm lucky enough to be doing the Genk one. But um, you know, it's going to be yeah, anything to get the atmosphere going. You know, we're gonna, everyone's going to be up for it. You know, experiencing it, listening even to the. The tune for Europa League. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm expecting a nice chill can of beer next to my seat, a flag, <laughs> and that, that's it. Atmosphere will be created, and because you get sick of watching sort of your never walk alone, the cop. You know, it's about time we we kind of did yeah, our own, yeah. uh, did our own version. I think just before I move on to Marzi, um, in terms of stats, I was mentioning um, Cara and Fontas. So the little boy Fontas, he's got nine goals in 24 games last season. So about one in three. Um, Cara has got 15 goals in 32, so one in two last season. And they have got one other player I didn't mention, Nazmula, who kind of plays behind the front two. Um, he got, actually, he got 20, 12 goals he got, really. So that's well, that wasn't bad. So they, they they do have a couple of forwards. They can change it around with a little man and a big man tomorrow is what I think we'll see. But off the bench, they've got a couple of creative players. Um, so we'll see. I think, it, I think it'll be quite good. Um, so, Marzi, what do you what do you think? How they'll set up? What do you what do you think they're going to come out bore, bore us to death, or they're going to be quite wait and perhaps uh, attack in the second half? I think I think you'll probably uh, smashed it in. Um, um, what what you've sort of said, mate? I think it'll be like a Burnley sort of side where you try and keep it tight, and then if if you can go for it in the second half, I think you have took the words out of my mouth. Um, the thing what worries me is, I know I've, I've seen a few people in the comments saying you wouldn't risk Antonio, but we've got no one like Antonio uh, with pace. So if, even if he comes on, gets a goal, and we're 2 new up at half-time, then bring him off, the job's pretty much half done. For me, when, when, when you're chasing the game and bringing someone on, I think they've got more chances of getting injured. Say, for example, if you go... Say, for example, it's one all, for example, and you tell Antonio to go on for the last 20 minutes. They're holding on for the lead. They could take him out. It's it is it's it's a it's a it's a tough one, but I'm I'm still feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. Yeah. What about you, Kafal? Uh I can't say I know too much about them, but uh with the way they've been going, they they obviously haven't been too threatening this season and uh I think they have eight points in nine games they've played so far in the league. They've lost their first European game and they don't have a great record in Europe. They just seem to get into it and then lose every year, so uh I can see them. I can see them losing again, and uh, I, I, I think they'll have to go for it if they if they want it. But if they're used to just getting into Europe and uh, going through the the motions of it and going, getting out of the group stage, coming back the next year, who knows if if they're even going to be fighting too hard for it? They might just throw out a team, and it's it's just another game to them. Like, yeah, I think. Um... In past, I mean, I'm not sure why they've suddenly their forms just hit the floor. I mean, how can you finish second and you're they were bottom before the last getting a point? It's just all over the place with them. Um, in terms of injuries, I don't know if you guys have heard some news filtering across some of our channels. Um, just before we went live, um, with Kufal being a doubt, I didn't even know if he's going to be in the record yeah, to Kent, play. Yeah, 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 Kent put it in the chat earlier. Um, I heard he was meant to be a doubt for the Leeds game. Like there was a few people circling around saying that um, he had a knock of some description, maybe an ankle or a leg or something, and he wouldn't sort of maybe uh, play on Saturday. But um, I'm hoping that not that he will necessarily play, but I'm definitely hoping that you know it'll be nice to see them all sort of there like they were in Manchester for the cup. You know, just support and and that side of it. Yeah, I think um, we've been fairly good in terms of injuries um, especially last season and this season I think only Fredericks was a bit of a doubt and Fredericks has had so many issues since he joined unfortunately because he was looking good wasn't he before breaking down um, 
I don't know if it's all, all these players that are quite rapid and fast. They seem to pick up groin strains, hamstring strains. It's like remember Michael Owen, he, he never quite got out of that, didn't he? Another another funny thing we were looking at is um, me and Miles. We realised the um, yeah we're playing an Austrian team and the VAR person, fourth official, assistant refs, and referee. They're all from Germany. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if that's wise because yeah. Austria and Germany, obviously, same language. They do get on. They're next door to each other. They're very close. Yeah. And, and I think in the 82 World Cup, they, I think they fixed the game. I think they did. Yeah. I can't remember. There's something like right. that. Yeah. So, Charles, do you want me to do my links and trivia for the game tomorrow for every, all the viewers? Yeah. Keep them in ch- for people, you've probably seen some of them on Twitter, what I released today. But if Vlasic features tomorrow, that would be his 50th game in Euro, uh, UEFA cl- club competition. So Europa League and Champions League. So that's a nice stat for a 23-year-old to definitely feature uh, in that stat. Um, Rapid Vienna, I've got a centre-half, an ex-Tottenham player. So he's going to get a fantastic reception tomorrow. Uh, Kevin Winner, he also played at Stoke. So, yeah, that's another good stat. Um, Yarmolenko and Pablo Fornells have both scored against Rapid Vienna for their old clubs. So that we could have, if you want to do bets as well, probably Yarmolenko and Fornells. Maybe they'll get that again. Um, <laughs> and Rapid Vienna have conceded a, comb- a competition high of 102 goals in Europa, Europa League in 28 games. Bad, it's got eh? it's got it's got Q West Ham written all over. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, 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 oh wow! Yeah. Is, uh, and yeah, go on, mate. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it, it, it. You know, hopefully it's not a Q West Ham because we are prone to an embarrassment of a result at times. Yeah. Um, as we've seen in this said competition, you know, in the uh, quote, couldn't even get through the the qualifying round. I mean, we won't go into oh. that one. But don't don't uh, if Dom's watching, don't wind him up much. <laughs> no, no, he's not pretty pretty back like pretty. Yeah, no, yeah, that happened on the, on Saturday, but he doesn't like that. He don't enjoy that. So uh, <laughs> yeah. hopefully, we no, we just got to come through, get there, get the job done, and and away we go. Yeah. And the last act for which I which I'm very uh, which is confidence for us, and it's a credit for Moyes. Uh, David Moyes will be successful in each last qualifying out of the group in his last three times he's been in Europe as well with Everton and Man United in the ch- once in the Champions League so that's a, another positive to take so that's the trivia stuff from me as well there you go Jazz uh, I was thinking a minute ago Marshy should we swap shirts tomorrow with their fans <laughs> I was going to say I, was, I know you said pre, uh, pre going live that they've sold out so I mean uh, you know there might be a few knocking about for you yeah, I went to their ground. They're quite friendly. I was walking around. There's a few grumpy ones. Um, probably, um, probably you know who they are. I didn't want to have a chat. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I might, might swap shirts with a couple of them tomorrow. You know what I'm like. Yeah, I'll say <laughs> you get, you'll be over at the West End TV with a couple of Vienna shirts or whatever. Yeah, it's that kind of stripy green colour. And then, um, yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? Um, predictions, everyone, starting with Kafal. What do you think, predictions? Um, three now. Positive, is that like all? it. Is that all? <laughs> great, great explanation. Yeah, more, more, <laughs> who's more scoring? Than... No, who's scoring? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I think Vlasic will get one. Yarmo, and we'll go for Craig Dawson. Big Craig. Me? Wow. Please, Me? Yeah. What, what do you think? It's got to come in. It's got to come in. I've had four. I, I, I didn't have time to cash out at Newcastle. I'm going four-one because he wouldn't let me cash out when it was four-one for me. Right, Marshy, what about yourself? Uh, I'll go another two-nil. I think. I think it'd be comfortable. I think we'll have a. We create a load of chances. Um, be nice to keep another clean sheet. Normally we switch off, don't we? At the best of times, and we always concede. But uh, yeah, no two-nil. I think uh, maybe Diop and. I think I'm going to go maybe D up and Noble. Kent Kent's gone two 0 Noble penalty. Nyama. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for four nil. Go four nil. Yeah, I was deba- I was debating four nil myself. <laughs> <before maybe that. laughs> 
So everyone's everyone's confident like we were on Saturday in Southampton, and uh, <laughs> always tricky, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the teams that sort of we don't play as well against teams that kind of play the style we do as 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 they sit back and and launch the counters. I know we've been a bit more attacking recently, but we 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 were a very defensive team last year, and we'd get the we'd get the breaks, but we don't know how to break down that sort of. Uh, low sh- uh, shape team that's real far back and we don't know how to break it down but uh, I think we'll we'll just have the quality over them yeah I think um, one of the changes I was talking about was obviously Kral coming in for Suchek um, I don't know who went to the game on Leeds and Marsh I can't remember you usually go to a lot of the away games um, yeah did yeah. you see how Sky were telling us that in the first half as an example he, he, he yeah Suchek was uh, looked a bit tired and yeah, he was at fault. He was at fault yeah. for the goal as well, weren't he? he? Just seemed a bit yeah. sort of slow, and they sort of nipped in off of him. And they had some good players, Leeds, you know. But obviously, we uh, we knew it was going to be tough going there. But we um, Moyes again at half time, like you know, we've seen it many times. Newcastle, you know, start at the beginning of the season. We go in at half time, lose it, and we come out and play really well. And we played really well before they scored their goal, which was unfortunate. We had created a bit, um, and then. But obviously, towards the end, you know, when Antonio scored, it just um, yeah, the roof come off. It just kept it off. Lovely. Yeah, yeah I saw Kent Marshy put that at the top. What was that atmosphere like when that goal went in? Was there a few limbs lost from you? Uh, I, I'll be honest, yeah. <laughs> I think it was arguably one of the best, I think, scenes I've been in for, for years. It was just, yeah. I think it was just because we were getting a lot of stick from them behind the goal. Um, throughout the entire game really as yeah. you do you have a bit of banter then it gets a bit more tasty and sort of like you know a few of our fellas on the pitch and you know sort of trying to get in and then get back out before the stewards got in and it was just like you know everyone rushing forward and because it was all so tight in in that lower section especially um i think even one of the boys you know uh done his back in a little bit i think slipped a disc or something little bill so um that was uh that was that is, yeah, just manic scenes to be honest with you. It's, um, won't forget that one for a while. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. No, like I said, boys, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we, we we say it all the time as a West Ham fan. It doesn't matter what the result is, as long as the team puts hundred percent. And I think even if we have a couple who are not right, at, not right as they should, I still think. Sorry. My internet. I'm using my using my phone. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Looks like our other guest couldn't quite make it, unfortunately. So we'll try to get him on again. I think he's due to come in on Monday. I think when we'll review the Brentford game. So so hopefully um hopefully we we'll make it. Um, but Marsh has been a pleasure to. To have you on, my son, you're one of the first. The channel's only about three weeks old. Um, no, I appreciate that. Like I say, you know, all the guys that do the channels, you know, whichever ones they are, and all very welcoming people that I've ever experienced and known. So, um, yeah, keep up the good work. Obviously, you hit the ground running, which is good. So, uh, I'll tune into a lot of your stuff as well coming up. So, um, always interesting people's opinions and and good guys. So, yeah, appreciate you having me. It's been it's good. And oh, um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have you on regularly, and a lot of other people as well. And we've got a, lots of other plans. We'll be doing lots of shows on Hammers history and food and nostalgia. What's your favourite shirt? And lots of things will be happening next sort of weeks and months. And and we'll we'll have you back um, really. So, yeah, so lovely. Thank, yeah, so good. Appreciate that. Thank you for that. No problem. Um, Malsey, any any last minute words for myself? <laughs> Um, just, just like I said, I think this is the best feeling what the squad's had. I'm, I'm gutted I'm not going to these two home games, honestly. I know I'm going away on holiday, but I, I really wish I was there, especially, I think, tomorrow, the first game at home. I think the atmosphere, atmosphere is going to be great. And uh, the way, even at the Man United game, you could hear it. As long as the, um, as long as the crowd's behind us, I think the crowd are the 12th man, and we've proved that since we've been back and uh, I'm feeling positive uh, everyone stay safe like me and Jazz were we've been saying it the last couple of days we we've, this is our first experience of European fans so obviously it sounds like I'm being like a dad but stay in groups you don't know who you're walking past and whatever but no I hope it all goes well and uh, yeah two positive results and when I'm back on Tuesday we'll have a party and I'll be yeah. 30 
<laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's only a number. It's, it depends how you feel. That, that's the main thing, really. Uh, yeah, it's only a exactly, number, mate. Mate. I, f- I feel great. I feel great. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Kafal, any any last last words from yourself? No, just have to have to. Suppose we just have to wait to watch the game, and it's 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 hopefully going to be a good one. I think it's going to be a a a, a confident sort of win, and uh, it'd be great for the fans to get to experience some home European football. Brilliant, yeah, definitely. excellent. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching. Um, we'll be doing another show post post match. Um, I think it's tomorrow. I believe when is it, Martin? Yeah, fr- fr- Friday. Friday. Friday, Friday lunch, from... lunch time. So many games, Marshy. Like two, three games a week. It's hard to keep up, isn't it? I know. Yeah, we've got to be ready for him. We're not <laughs> experienced with that, so uh, yeah. you know right. all this. You know, rest players. Right. So, Jazz. So, Friday lunch time is the is the review <laughs> from this game. Saturday morning is the game for <laughs> the game oh, for my... Brentford on Sunday, <laughs> and then yeah. Monday lunch time is the review from the Brentford game. Oh my gosh, there we go. You boys have got it harder than the actual players, mate, I'm telling you. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. We, we need, but no. We need to we need to play like yeah, Malenko, take it easy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> well, no, but do you want to t- yeah, no, I just wanted to say, I know you just said it as well, Marsh, it means a lot. Like I said, a lot. I like the West Ham fans. It's one big community. Um, anyone, anyone in the chat as well, like we, we do this for not just having the guest on, we do it for everyone in the chat. If you want to come on and have your say, just drop any of us a message and as, we'll, we'll have you on, literally. It's, this this is one big family and you're, you're more than welcome to. But Marshy, um, obviously Jazz just put it up there. Do you want to... Um, just let pe- people don't know. I think everyone knows who you are anyway, but do you just want to <laughs> plug it? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, like I say, everyone's, you know, I, I appreciate the nice stuff. Everyone's, you know, no one's any different from anyone else. So everyone's very welcoming. And I'm always saying about, the, you know, the West Ham TV boys, you know, a lot of people ask the questions and, you know, about being good on there and, you know, multiple other people. So it's nice to get different people's opinions as well, not just the, you know, the regular, if you like, for want of a better word, same faces. It's nice to get other people's, um, you know, outlook on things and, and the game. So that's as interesting as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully you get some other boys on as well. And we can all have a listen to some others as well. So, you know, which no doubt you'll do. And, yeah, good luck with it all. It's, uh, I know how hard it is. So, uh, yeah, keep it up. Right. Cheers, Mars, mate. You want to you do the buttons, mate, you know? Because I'm still in training yeah. mode, you know, Marsh, you I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna, this is, it's gonna be like, it's gonna be. I'm not enjoying this either. He's gonna be messaging me. How'd you do this? How'd you do that? I might as well have my phone next to me all day. But, but no, honestly, thanks everyone. Um, keep out uh, if you are new around here. Click the click the like button and subscribe, and you'll get notified when. Me and Jazz or whoever's on makes idiots of ourselves and talks about West Ham. What more can you? What more can you ask for? But no, yeah. uh, thanks everyone. And one last thing left to say is, come on, you irons. Come on, come on you irons. Take care, people.